Deputy Doug Wynn. Praise for these brothers. Hallelujah. Amen. We praise God for the brothers this morning. We need a few more good men. Amen. The same praises unto our God. Amen. God, we thank you because you are great. You are good. There is none like you. There's none beside you. 
You're great all by yourself. You're good all by yourself. We've searched all over. Couldn't find nobody else. None is greater than you. So we praise you. We bless your name. We give you total praise. Thank you, God, for this moment where we come to hear from you. We know you have a word for us. So we ask you, God, to speak to us in this place. I ask you, God, to anoint me afresh. Stand up in me that I might be a blessing to those who have gathered in this house on today. Our prayers that souls will be saved, that lives will be transformed, that the church will be revived. We need you, God. We need you to order our steps in your word. So declare unto us on today, this is our prayer. Jesus' name we ask it all. Let the church say amen. 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 Come on, turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel in chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Starting at verse number 17. 1 Samuel chapter 10, starting at verse number 17. And if you have it, say amen. Amen. Uh. Reading from the New International Version, these words we find therein. Samuel summoned the people of Israel to the Lord at Mizpah said to them this is what the lord the god of israel says i brought israel up out of egypt and i delivered you from the power of egypt and all the kingdoms that oppress you but you have now rejected your god uh -huh. who saves you out of all your calamities and distresses you have said no set a king over us so now present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and clans. When Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. Then he brought forward the tribe of Benjamin clan by clan, and Matri's clan was chosen. Finally, Saul, son of Kish, was chosen. But when they looked for him, he was not to be found. So they inquired further of the Lord, has the man come here yet? The Lord said, yes, he has hidden himself among the baggage. They ran and brought him out. And as he stood among the people, he was a head taller than any of the others. Samuel said to all the people, do you see the man the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him among all the people. Then the people shouted, Long live the king. Samuel explained to the people the regulations of the kingship. He wrote them down on a scroll and deposited it before the Lord. And Samuel dismissed the people, each to his own home. Saul also went to his home in Gibeah, accompanied by valiant men whose hearts God had touched. But some troublemakers said, how can this fellow save us? They despised him, brought him no gifts. But Saul kept silent. Yes. The Lord had chosen Saul, but when they looked for him, in verse number 21, it said he could not be found. They said, Lord, where is he? Has he come here yet? The Lord said, yes, he's hidden himself among the baggage. Look at somebody and tell them, you can run, but you can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide. 
Yeah, look at somebody else and tell them you can run, but you can't hide. Yeah, the Lord's going to catch up with you. Amen. That's what I want to talk about this morning as we deal with the series, Hidden Figures. Amen. We want to talk with this title in mind. You can run, but you can't hide. Israel came to a point where they desired a king. They wanted the same kind of structure that they saw with other nations. They were impressed with what they witnessed from other countries. So they sought the same kind of setup within Israel. When God heard their desire, he was offended. When they expressed what they wanted, God was insulted. Because for the most part, church, he was their king. Up to this point, God had been their leader. When they needed direction, they looked unto him. When they needed protection, they depended on him. As a matter of fact, he delivered them from bondage there in Egypt. He made a way for them through the Red Sea. When the enemy attacked them, he fought their battles. He gave them water from a rock and bread from heaven. And after all he done for them, they now want a king. They want someone else to serve as their leader. So God decides to grant them their wish. Watch this. Because sometimes he'll give you what you want just to teach you a lesson. Oh, yeah. He'll give you the position just to make you humble. He will bless you just to open up your eyes because with the blessing, there comes a burden. And he'll give you what you want just to teach you a lesson. And how many people have gotten the blessing, but at some point in time, you had to ask God to help you out. Oh, how many people have gotten blessed, but later on down the line, you had to ask God to deliver you from it. Sometimes he'll bless you to teach you a lesson that there is a burden that comes with every blessing. So God decides to give Israel what they want. He allows them to have what they desire. He tells Samuel about a brother by the name of Saul. He is the one whom Samuel should anoint. He stood a head taller than all of the others. There was no one like him, it says, within Israel. So Samuel called the 12 tribes unto him. He sought to reveal who God had chosen. And we're told the tribe of Benjamin had been selected. Then Matri's clan was handpicked. And finally, Saul, the son of Kish, was chosen. But when they looked for him, he could not be found. And they asked the Lord about him, and the Lord exposed him. He said he's hidden himself among the baggage. Saul tried to dodge them, but God called him out because you can run, but you can't hide. You can try to duck him, but he'll track you down. You can run away, but he'll hem you in. You can try to escape, but you can't dodge God. You can run, church, but your show enough can't hide. 
See, Saul, for the most part, is just like us. Yeah, God calls us to do something, but we try to dodge it. Uh -huh. I'm talking to somebody right now. But you can't dodge God because he's omniscient. Uh, you can't duck him because he's omnipresent. You can try to run, but you can't hide because he's everywhere at the same time. And how many folk can say, I tried to escape, but he tracked me down. Oh, I tried to get away, but he called me out. I tried to dodge him, but he hemmed me in. And that's why it's best to give up right now. Because you can hide all you want, but he won't leave you alone. Yeah, you can try to run, but he'll hunt you down. You can try to dodge him, but he won't give in. And that's why it's best to surrender to God. See, I found out that the more you try to run, the worse off it'll get. The more you try to dodge him, the more trials you will face. Because God is just like this. God will allow you to run like Jonah just so that folk will toss you over the ship to put you in a position where you have to say to God, all right, God, I surrender unto you because I'm tired of going through what I'm going through. I see you're not going to get off my tracks until I surrender unto you. And so it's best to surrender unto him because if you don't surrender, he'll take you through some things just to make you hold your hands up and say, God, I'm coming out with my hands held up. I surrender. Do I have anybody in here that tried to run away from God? But God let you go through some stuff to the point where you had to give up and give in to what he was calling you to do. Amen. That's all in our text that helps us. Amen. With, with this lesson on today. So preacher, what lessons do we learn when you're in transition? Here, here are three lessons that we learn when you're in transitions. The first lesson is this. When you're in transition, you got to learn how to manage God's methods. Oh, when you're in transition, you got to learn how to manage God's methods. Uh, Samuel gathered the people of Israel at Mizpah. They assembled themselves by their tribes and their clans. Samuel brought them closer and the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. When the tribe of Benjamin came forward, it says that uh, he chose Matri's clan. Matri's clan church then came forward and Saul was chosen. Look at it. The lot fell on him out of every one. Samuel went through this process and Saul was selected. He used this procedure to decide on who would be king. The church, that is sort of puzzling when you take a look at verse number one. When you go back and read verse number one, Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head. Look, look at it. He had already consecrated Saul as king. Are y'all with me? Uh-huh. He said, has not the Lord anointed you leader over his inheritance? And, and, and that right there, church, got my attention. That, that is the thing that caught my eye. 
Because here's my thing. If he's already been anointed king, why does he have to go through this process? Oh, my God. You already anointed me to be king. Why are you going from tribe to tribe and clan after clan? You already poured the oil on my head. So why I got to deal with this process? Uh-huh. I'm talking to somebody right now. See, see, it seems like a waste of time since he's already anointed. It seems pointless since he's already king. It doesn't make sense since he's already consecrated, which means when God takes you higher, you have to manage his methods. Okay. It may seem worthless, but you got to deal with it. It may seem useless, but you got to go through it. See, I'm talking to somebody because God made you a promise, but you're going through some drama and you're wondering, God, you told me I would be in a certain place. So why ain't I there yet? Why am I going through what I'm going through? I'm trying to help some. See, if I was Saul, I'm saying to Samuel, Hey, man, where's my robe? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you already anointed me to become king. I'm talking to somebody on today because you're looking for your crown and your robe. But God left out the details that after he declares a thing unto you, it doesn't mean that you get your crown and your robe right after that. No, you got to go through a process. Oh, my God. So that God can prepare you for the crown he'll put on you because if you don't go through the process you might not be prepared and you'll get the crown and mess it up oh my god see it, it seems worthless to you right now uh-huh because you trying to figure out what's going on because your mind is on the promise. Uh-huh. But God left out the process. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Uh-huh. See, see, see. You, you, you're off balance right now. Because what you're going through, it ain't adding up. Because what you're facing now, it doesn't look like what God told you. Oh, my God. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like you on your way to the promise. As a matter of fact, it looks like you're living in contradiction to what God told you. Oh, my God. And you're trying to figure out did you hear God right? I'm here to let you know that you heard him right. But sometimes, guess what? He'll have you scratching your head trying to figure out what in the world is going on. But can I tell you what God is doing with you? God is working on your faith to let you know that if you're going to get through this process, you've got to trust in me and even though you can't figure it out and even though it ain't making sense you've got to walk by faith and not by sight do I have anybody here that had to go through a process and you couldn't figure out what was going on but you had to trust God because all you had was his word would you touch somebody and tell them get through the process and you'll get to your promise you've got to deal with some burdens before you get to your blessing and I want to let you know that you're on the right track you just got to learn how to manage the process all right, all right. see it's in the process where he works on your faith. 
Oh, my God. Yeah. It's in the process where God is working on your worship. It's in the process where he's working on your flaws. Oh, my God. I can't get no help right there. It may not make sense, but it's a part of his method. See, sometimes you got to tell yourself, it doesn't make sense, but I've got to be strong. Yeah, it seems pointless to me, but I've got to hold on. It's working my nerves, but I got to go through it because after the process, I'll get what he promised. Can I bless you right quick? Be because it's in the process um, where he lets you know that you're closer to your promise. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody here. See, see, it's in the process where he lets you know that what he promised you is just around the corner. See, that's why when it get rough for you, you ought to give God praise. Oh, I'm trying to help. When it gets tough for you, that's when it's time to shout. When it starts to work on your nerves, you ought to rejoice because it's a sign to let you know that you're closer to promise. And the rougher it gets, the closer you are. The tougher it gets, that's when you ought to praise. I'm trying to help somebody shout in here this morning because I told somebody when God takes you higher be prepared for the devil to work your nerves and when it starts to pick up in your life it ain't time to pout and complain it's time to give God praise because the devil is letting you know that you closer to your promise. Right. Oh, touch somebody and tell them I must be close. Oh my God. After all the stuff I've been going through, after all the stuff I've been dealing with, I must be closer now than I was before. And so I'm going to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his said you got to learn how to manage my methods because see you looking for your crown right after I make you a promise and you got to learn that with the crown comes some chaos and with the blessing comes some burdens and you've got to deal with my methods before I take you to promise so you got to learn how to manage my methods. They don't make sense. Oh my God. But you got to be strong. Amen. Oh, here, here, here's the second point. Um, um, it, it, if you uh, are in transition, and you're getting to the place where God is calling you to do, um, here, here's the thing. At some point in time, you've got to change your company. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm talking to you right now. Uh-huh. Yeah, at the beginning of the year, God is letting you know there's some folk on your list. Samuel shared with the people the role of the king. He informed them of the regulations as it pertain unto God. See, Saul wouldn't function like the kings of other nations. His role was supposed to be compatible with the continued rule of God. Yeah, Samuel wrote down the regulations upon a scroll. He deposited it before the Lord in the sanctuary. Once this was done, 
watch this, he dismissed the people. And we're told that those assembled went to their own home. Look at it. Saul, we discovered, went to his home in Gibeah. And watch this. He was accompanied by some valiant or mighty men whose hearts had been touched by God. Oh, my God. See, see I like that um, because before this time, he was accompanied by somebody else. Oh, yeah. But now after he's been made king, God surrounds him with some mighty men of God. Oh. See, he's been anointed to serve as the king of Israel. Yeah, he's been consecrated to serve as the leader of God's people. So God, watch this, put some new people into his life. Uh, some brave and fearless brothers are now in his circle. See, since he's been promoted, church, guess what? He'll be attacked. Yeah, he, he's king now. Uh-huh. Yeah, since he's now the king, guess what? People will plot against him. So he needs some people who will go to war for him. Which means when you get promoted, you have to change who's around you. Uh, see, some folk can't go with you when God takes you higher. Uh, you can't take them with you when he moves you up. Because, watch this, there are new demons at the next level. <laughs> and you need the right people to deal with those devils. See, you need some people who will lift you in prayer. I ain't talking about this phony stuff. Yeah, you can't take peaches and June bug with you now. Uh, you need some prayer warriors in your corner. Yeah, yeah, y'all know who I'm talking about. La La and all of them. Huh. Yeah, yeah, you need some folk huh, who aren't weak or scared huh, because there are new demons huh, on the next level. Huh, and you need some mighty folk huh, to deal with those devils. See, Saul is now the king. And that means folk will be out to get him. They will be trying, church, to take him out. So God touched the hearts of some courageous brothers. He touched the hearts of some unafraid men. Look at it. He didn't choose every brother. He only chose some. Because everybody ain't anointed Amen. to deal with your problems. Ah, I hope you hear me on today. Look, look, they may be in church, uh, but they may fold under pressure. They may be saved, but they may walk away from you. They may be on your pew, but they may bail out because everybody ain't anointed to handle your problem. See, if you take the wrong people, you might get defeated. Yeah, that's why you got to be careful who you got around you because if you got the wrong folk, the devil may go to work on you and he may put you in a bind that you can't get out on. That's why I need some Holy Ghost fire baptized 
wise folk who don't mind waging war against the enemy. I need some folk who ain't scared to call out a demon, to get down on your knees and lift me up in prayer. I need some folk who ain't scared to lift holy hands and give God some worship and say, Pastor, I ain't gonna let you go down. I'ma be right here for you through thick and through thin. Do I have anybody in here that can go to God in prayer and make some demons flee so that you can help somebody to come out of somebody and tell them I don't need everybody <laughs> tell them I just need about two people <laughs> because wherever two <laughs> or three are gathered <laughs> I don't need everybody <laughs> just give me two people <laughs> that believe in the power of God <laughs> that believe he can heal you <laughs> that believe he can make a way for you <laughs> I just need a few said when I take you higher it's time for you to change your company no you can't take everybody with you because everybody ain't built to handle the demons that are on the next level here's the last thing on today you ain't gonna like this But I'm trying to help you to become a better Christian. Help myself out at the same time. You ain't going to like this because I ain't like it. Watch this. Despite how you're treated, you've got to display the right demeanor. I see you shaking your head. I don't care how they treat you. You got to show that you know the Lord. I'm going to show it to you in the text. Samuel installed Saul as the king of Israel. And before Saul went home, watch this, some troublemakers started something. He, he, he just got installed, just got the keys to the church, and already somebody starting something. That's how it is for somebody. You just got the job, just got promoted. You ain't made it in the new office yet, and already somebody done started. Look, look at what, what they said. They said, um, in verse number 27, they, they said, how can this fellow save us? Uh -huh. huh. huh. God, God just anointed him. God, God just anointed him. God just consecrated him. And then they got the nerve to say, how can this fellow save us? Look, look, they felt he wasn't adequate to protect them from danger. That's right. That's right. Look, look at what it says. They hated him and didn't bring him any gifts. My, my, my. Oh, my God. How can this fellow save us? Then they hated him and didn't bring him any gifts. But I like what verse number 27 says at the end. It says, but Saul kept silent. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Um, before I deal with the point, allow me to offer something to you. Look, when, when I did, did research, um, 
I, I found out something interesting. Um, these tru troublemakers, um, for the most part, uh, uh, they didn't say nothing until Saul was made king. They didn't come against him until after he was promoted. There you go. Everything was cool until he moved up. Which means when God takes you higher, some folk will despise you. I'm talking to somebody because you're trying to figure out what you did to them. Why they don't like you because you ain't said nothing you ain't did. It ain't because of nothing you did or did not do. It's the fact that God's hand and his favor is on your life. Um, see, don't be surprised when folks start acting funny. I'm just trying to get you right. Don't be shocked when they roll their eyes at you. Watch this. Some folk around you, watch this, will come against you. Because when God takes you higher, people will despise you. So why you better be careful talking about they your friend. Because I found out that God will bless you just so he can open up your eyes. Because they only your friends when you ride along with them. But when God moves you past them, do I have a believer in the house? But, but here, here's the thing. Some people started making trouble, but Saul kept silent. Mm. See, that killed some of y'all right there. They looked down on him, but he kept his mouth shut. They talked bad about him, but he didn't say a word. Because despite how you're treated, You've got to show the right demeanor. See, see here it is. Um, church, when I did research, I found out something about troublemakers. Found out about people who rebelled in the camp. Watch, watch this. People who started trouble were put to death. Don't, don't miss this. And the town in which they came from was supposed to be destroyed. All right. Oh, my God. Yeah, when I look back in Deuteronomy, um, it says that if folk made trouble in the camp, uh-huh, guess what? You were messing up the accord that was in the camp. And so if you're messing up the accord, at the end of the day, you're messing with the order of God. And so if you're making trouble, guess what? You had to die. And the town that you came from was destroyed. Why? Because they figured the same spirit that was in you was probably in the town that you came from. But when they started trouble with Saul, he let them go. Oh, my God. He didn't kill them. He didn't say, your town is destroyed. No, they did him wrong, but he let them slide. I know this is hard for you. He could have killed them. But he went home. Which means when folk mistreat you, you've got to move on. See, despite what they do, don't go off on them. Despite what they say, 
you ought to take the high road. It may hurt, but don't say a word because vengeance is mine, thus says the Lord. See, if you try to pay them back, it's going to mess up your witness. Yeah. If you try to put them in place, it'll mess up God's glory. They may have been rude, but you got to move on. Because the battle isn't yours, but mine says the Lord. And I wondered how Saul Church could keep his cool. Huh. Man, you got these folk going off on you right there in front of your face. How in the world you can just walk off? And Saul said, preacher, even though they made trouble, he said, I was still the king. <laughs> y'all miss y'all shout. He, he said, even though they did me wrong, he said, I still had position. Yeah, he said, even though they put me down, guess what? I still had my crown. He said, in spite of their mess, I was still blessed. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody in here. See, that's how Jesus could forgive his haters. Y'all missing it. That's how the Lord could let them slide. Yeah, on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Despite what they did, guess what? He was still the Lord. Uh, despite what they said, he was still king. Uh, would you look at somebody and tell them, uh, despite what they did to you, uh, tell them you are still blessed. Uh, despite what they said, uh, tell them you're still highly favored. Uh, despite what they've done, uh, nothing has changed. Uh, in spite of their mess, you are still blessed and do I have somebody in here that can say preacher you just help me out oh, because despite they did I'm still the head oh, despite what they did to me I'm still above oh, I'm still a child of the most high God so in spite of your mess I'm still blessed. And since I'm still blessed, I might as well give God the praise. I said, since I'm still blessed, I might as well give God the glory. If you know you're still blessed, would you stand to your feet? I said, if you know you're still favored, would you stand to your feet? Would you clap your hands? And give God the praise. Would you open your mouth and give God the glory? I'm looking for some blessed people. I'm looking for some people who can say, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come and when I go. Is there anybody here that can give God the praise? I said, is there anybody here? that can give God the glory would you high five three people and tell them despite what they did I still look good despite what they did I'm still blessed despite their scheme I'm still on top and that's enough for me to give God a shout Somebody say yeah. yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. yeah. Saul said, I'm going to just walk off from this. He 
He said, I ain't got time for this. Because I'm king. Watch this. God has already done it for me. And since God already did it for me, nobody can take it away from me. So I'm talking to somebody on today. Guess what? When them folk treat you bad, just walk away. You ain't got time to be going back and forth with them. You ain't got time to be putting them in their place. No, you move on and let the Lord put them in their place. Because if you're wasting your time going back and forth with them, you're missing out on what the Lord has for you. God's trying to move you to greater and bigger things. And here you are trying to put folk in their place. God said, move on. Say, you ain't got time for that no more. And at the end of the day, see, the enemy is trying to use them to mess up your witness. Because other folk are standing by saying, I thought they were saved. Yeah, your co-workers who was thinking about coming to church with you, guess what? I thought they said they were a believer. If that's how believers act, why I need to go to church? Uh, you got to take the high road. Let the Lord fight your battles. Because in spite of what they do to you, guess what? The Lord is still with you. The Lord is still on your side. I'm talking to, I'm ministering to somebody right now. Yeah. Let, let them go. Let them, let, release them. Because the longer you go back and forth, guess what? You're keeping yourself bound. So let the anger go. Let the bitterness go. Allow God to work on the hurt. You walk away and move on to the greater things that he has for your life. I'm talking to somebody on here. God said, I've got some new people I want to introduce you to. Yeah, some people who are going to treat you better than the folk who mistreated you. Oh, I, I want to pray. I want to pray as the spirit guy. I want to pray for people who, who have been hurt. You've been hurt by some folk. And it's, it's been hard for you to just walk away. It's been hard for you to keep silent. Uh-huh. That's who I want to pray for this. Some people did you wrong. They did you nasty. They did you dirty. Yeah. And it's been hard for you to keep your mouth closed. It's been hard for you to keep things to yourself. Yeah, this is real this morning. I need some real people who will be honest. Say, you know what? I ain't over it yet. I'm still bitter. I'm still angry. Because you know what? The enemy has been using them to determine your posture. Can I talk to you this morning? The enemy has been using them, guess what, to keep you bound. Because every time you think about it or think about them, guess what, you get mad, you get upset. You get angry. 
the bitterness come back. So watch this. The enemy has been using them to somewhat control you. Watch this. So you've given power to people. And I don't know about you, but I'm not allowing people to determine my posture. No, when God wakes me up in the morning, I'm going to have a great day. I'm going to have a blessed day. I ain't got time to be thinking about what so-and-so did and what so-and-so said. No, nah, I'm going to enjoy this day that the Lord has given unto me. And so I want to pray with you on this morning that you will allow the Lord to take away the hurt, the pain, that you will uh, get the right kind of spirit within you. So when it comes up again, guess what? You can just keep your mouth closed. Walk away from it. And you know what? That's going to better your witness because they're going to say, what happened to them? They used to go back and forth. What happened? Yeah, that's your testimony that the Lord's been at work on me. Because at the end of the day, all of us are under construction. None of us have arrived. Amen. Amen. We all have some flaws. Oh, yes. Truth of the matter is, there are some folk out in the pew that need to be here at this altar. Amen. But we thank God for your honesty on this morning. Come on. If you're in the pew, would you just pray for them? Amen. Right there where you are. God, we bless you. We come as a community of faith on this morning. Because God, there's some hurt. There's some pain at the altar. Yes. Tears are coming down. Mascara is running. Oh, yes. Based on what somebody did to them. Said to them. And God, I intercede for them even now. Thank you. Asking you, God, to minister unto them. Yes, Lord, please. To take the pain away, to take away the hurt. To restore them. To renew their mind. To cre create in them a clean heart. To renew a right spirit within them. So they can be just like Saul, that when people come against them, they can just keep their mouth closed. Because they know that no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. That when people do something wrong to them, they'll recall that you work everything together for good. That when people plot on them, that they'll remember that what people mean for evil, God, you'll turn it around for their good. So thank you, God. Help us to keep things in perspective. To know that at the end of the day, you are in control. That they can't really take nothing away from us. Because if you have ordained it for us, it shall come to pass. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing they can do to undo what you've already done. And if they've done something to us, it's just a part of your plan. It's designed to bring your name praise. It's designed to bring your name the glory. And so help us to trust you, God. Because sometimes we don't understand what we go through. Sometimes, God, it's hard for us to figure some things out. So help us, God, to have faith in the process. Help us, God, to trust what you 
declared unto us. Even when things are in contradiction to what you said. And then God help us to understand that in spite of what they've done to us. At the end of the day we are still blessed. That you still have your hand on us. That you still God bless us with unmerited favor. You continue to open doors for us. You continue to make ways for us. Yes, thank you. So, John, we just want to thank you for all the great things that you have done. Despite what we've been through. We truly know, God, that you got a purpose and a plan for everything that we go through. Because we can look back on some things now. And things that used to hurt us, guess what? We find ourselves giving you praise for it now. So we bless your name and we give you the praise. We give you all the glory. Now, God, we pray for those who are unsaved, those who don't know you as Lord and as Savior. Move upon them. Bring them out of the bind that the enemy has them in. Even now. God, we pray in the spirit right now that you'll loose them. And we declare unto the enemy, you have no power, you have no authority. That all power belongs to God. And so we ask you, as a matter of fact, we tell you right now to take your hands off of them. Loose them and let them go so that they can find out what the Lord has for their life. It's in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask it all. Let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, hug somebody and tell them.